Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into the applied project calculus and baseball, and now look at question three and look at part A of it because there's three parts to it and it's takes too long if I did all of them in one video. So I'll go the, over the others in an, another video. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, so I'm not going to go over too much in a recap of this applied project, so make sure to watch my earlier videos on question one and two, and I'll put those in the link below. Basically, question one uh, dealt with the collision of baseball and bat as it as a uh, batter hits the ball, and then um, and when, what kind of force uh, uh, forces hit on the bat and uh, vice versa on the ball. Question two looked at the amount of work needed to put uh, in by the pitcher to throw a 90 mile per hour fastball. And now let's look at question three, part uh, A. Yes, yeah, so part uh, A of question three states an outfielder uh, fields a baseball. This just means a person in the outfield uh, in a baseball game just picks up the ball and then uh, starts to throw it. So. Uh, an outfielder fields a baseball 280 feet from the home plate and throws it directly to the catcher, which is at the home plate, with, init with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second. And to put it in perspective, that's about 68 miles per hour. And now uh, it says, assume that the velocity V of T of the ball after T seconds satisfies the differential equation below because of air resistance. Um, and that's right here, dV over dT equals to negative V over 10 and, uh, and then the question asks how long how long does it take for the ball to reach home plate and here uh, it says note ignore any vertical motion of the ball yeah so basically we're looking at the the time it takes for the uh, outfielder to throw the ball all the way to home plate and then that's just directly to it uh, assuming he could throw that far and um, yeah, and basically see how long that takes and then in part B and C what we'll do is uh, compare if it takes uh, faster if you were to throw it someone to an infielder and I'll explain that in a bit uh, and then throw it to home plate to see if it's faster throwing it uh, like that and basically part B is uh, where the infielder throws it faster so if the infielder can throw it faster would it be uh, better to for the outfielder to throw it to the infielder and then to home plate and I'll go over those in uh, the next video so stay tuned for that anyways uh, before I get into part A this is a diagram of the baseball uh, pitch right here so the catcher here is at home plate there's first base second third so these four right here these are called the infielders and then that's the, uh, yeah, so the infielders, and then these are the outfielders that I uh, explained above. So, outfielders. So, uh, part A says, uh, basically, someone in the outfield, let's say 280 feet, throws it from the outfield all the way to here. And then that's, this is part A. I'll just erase uh, this. So, these are outfielders, infielders. And then part B and C is dealing with is it better to throw it for uh, instead of there throw it to here and then throw it to here if this person can throw faster than the person out here and there's a person right here and this is so this is part b and c so we'll go over those in later videos so anyways let's look at part a so part a uh let's just draw it out first what we want so the person is 280 feet away so look at that. So it's 280 feet away, and he throws it with an initial velocity of of 100 feet per second directly to the catcher. And so, we, and we want to know what how long it takes. And this is the differential equation we are given. So let's draw that out. So this is the person in the outfield, smile face like that, and he throws the ball. So we'll call this. I'll write v zero or v of time is zero. And this just equals to 100 feet per second. So initial velocity 100 feet per second. And obviously it will slow down due to air resistance. So he's throwing it like that. And then if you have, he's in the outfield. Here's a second base, this is first base, third base. And then home plate. And then you have the catcher right here. Like that. Let's just say he has a uh, big glove. Okay, so anyways, that's uh, just my drawing of a glove. So he's throwing it over there to uh, to him, and the total distance across the, from there to there is 280 feet, like that. Yeah. So this is our drawing of uh, what part A is describing, and then what we want is basically 
uh, how long does it take for the ball to reach home plate or in other words what we'll do is if s of t is the let's say distance function distance function of the ball and that's just basically uh, the distance it travels with time of the ball so basically let's say we have like that so that's the velocity here and also with time it has a distance function uh, of the ball uh, s of t and also as a velocity so it, it with time it decreases the velocity but with time the distance increases so if this is true so basically if, if we let s of t is a distance function of the ball then what we want then we want uh, then we want t such that or or t at let's write that uh, oh yeah so we want the time t at at the distance function equals to well 280 feet so by the time it travels 280 feet so yes yeah, so that's what we need but we need to d determine the equation for this distance function but uh, we are given so we are given the differential equation for the velocity. So given dv over dt is equal to negative v over 10, like that. So from this we can solve for v of t, and also we know that the velocity, I'll just write, recall that the velocity, all it is is just a rate change of the distance. Yes, yeah, so now if we write this down, basically that the velocity v of t is equal to the rate change of the distance or the derivative of the distance function ds over dt and now this is this is just a simple differential equation so we could uh, rearrange this by moving the dt on the other side so we have v of t dt is equal to well ds so all the t is on the left side all the ds on the other side so we have something like that and then we take the integral on both sides to get our s uh, of t on the other side and now here I want to take the integral from 0 to time t, but we already have a variable t right there, so I'll just change the variable. So integral from 0 to t of v of x dx, and again, this x is simply a change of variable to make this possible. Of variable. So it, this x doesn't mean, uh, it's yeah, it's nothing special, Just it could be any variable, just so we could plug in the t afterwards and get a function of t. So now this equals to the integral of, uh, we'll go from 0, yeah, 0, or let's just go initial distance s of 0 to s of 1, yeah, of uh, ds. And what we'll do is uh, we'll let s of 0 be uh, just 0, so 0 feet initially, and then s of 1 just generically will go s of t, like that. So uh, we're writing that just so we don't get the variables mixed up. So this is the distance after a certain time t, and then we have uh, initially a zero feet. So what we have now with the integral of this side, integral of ds is just, well, s, uh, like that. And now we're going from zero to s1, so this is just, well, s1 minus uh, zero. So we, our s1 is basically now uh, equal to, well, s of t, and this equals to this uh, left side integral from zero to t, of v of x dx like that dx yes yeah, want to write that a bit neater so now this is our distance function so now that we have it so what we want is uh, the time t when s of t is equal to 280 feet but to do that we need to know what this uh, velocity function is so we need v of t and we can solve that by the differential equation this right here so we need v of t. So what we have is is basically dv over dt is equal to negative v over 10. So we could solve it from that, but before uh, instead of uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, we could solve this by well again recalling from my earlier videos on the natural growth uh, function or the law of natural growth, or the law of natural decay, etc. Basically, when, whenever we have a, I'll just write, if dy, and I've done this in my earlier videos, so make sure to check those out, put that in the link below. So dy over dt is equal to k uh, y, so if it's uh, proportional to itself, or the rate change is proportional to itself, 
and in our case k is basically um, like here our k is just uh, negative 1 over 10 so this is the exact same type of function so if we have this and we know that the initial condition y of 0 is equal to y of t is 0 then what we end up having is uh, the solution y of t is just simply equal to y0 e to the kt so that is what the solution is so in our case so thus since what we have is dv over dt is equal to negative uh, v over 10 and we know that v of 0 and I'll write and and v of 0 is equal to 100 feet per second so what we end up having is uh, right here the solution and again you can see the proof of this in earlier videos uh, on population growth etc so what we have is v of t is equal to y0 is now v0 100 so it's 100 feet per second and then times it by e to the k and where k is uh, right here so k is uh, negative uh, uh, 1 over 10 let's put that here as well k equals to negative 1 over 10 and now what we have is e to the well t over 10 and this negative sine like that so that is what our velocity function is so now if we plug this inside and change a variable to x so we can plug in the t what we have is now s of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t of vx v of x dx again that's just a change of variable plug this inside 0 to t 100 e to the negative x over 10 dx yes yeah, so now if we evaluate this uh, integral of that the 100 is just a constant e to the negative x over 10 recall that's just itself so e to the negative x over 10 and then we need to uh, divide by the uh, constant in front so negative uh, 1 over uh, put a negative 1 over 10 like that divided by it and you can see the proof of this in my other videos on uh, derivative of exponential functions anyways uh, you should be able to know that already if you're following through this video so now integral we evaluate from 0 to t and now uh, this negative 1 over 10 this is just the same thing as multiplying by 10 so we flip it over and what we end up getting is a negative 1000 and then this is times it by and put the e inside I mean the t inside we get e to the negative t over 10 minus now the 0 that just becomes e to the 0 negative 0 divided by 10 is just still 0 and now this part uh, 0 is just equal to 1 e to the 0 so what we end up having is is this right here in this negative we'll plug that inside so would we have the, I'll move the negative inside so 1000 and then so that we get a negative 1 I'm in a positive 1 and then a negative e to the negative t over 10 so we get a 1 over e negative t over 10 like that so that is what our distance function is so what we want at s of t is equal to 280 feet so we're uh, almost almost there so now let's plug this inside so 280 is equal to 100 I mean 1000 like that and this is 1 uh, minus e to the negative t over 10 like that and then divide by uh, 1000 on the other side so we've got to solve for t move this over we get this 280 over uh, I'll just cancel the uh, the ones like that the one zero so we get this 28 over 100 equals to 1 minus e to the negative t over 10 so now what we have is to this and what we could do is well just move the e over t on the other side I mean e to the power of negative t over 10 on the other side and move this over here so move this over there so if it's positive and move this over there so it's negative we end up getting e to the negative t over 10 equals to 1 minus and now this 28 over 10 I'm just going to put a bubble 
just to make it simpler. 28 over 100, I mean. Let's divide by 2 on both sides. That equals 2. 14 over 50. Do that again. Because it's easy to do. And now this equals 2. Well, 7 over 25. You can't go any further than that. So what we get is this 7 over 25. Negative like that. To get rid of this uh, exponent, we put a lawn on both sides. So lawn like that. Let's put this better, like that. So what this happens is that e to the negative t, uh, yeah, the negative t over 10 goes down, and then ln e cancels. So we get a negative t over 10 is equal to, let's put this like that, is equal to ln of, of 1 minus 7 to 5, like that. Or in other words, t is equal to, move this over, negative 10 times ln, 1 minus 7 over 25, like that. And now if we plug this into the calculator, it's negative ln, uh, negative 10 times ln 1 minus 7 over, 20, over 25, we get about 3.285, and the units of this one are seconds, because we had 100 feet per second, etc. So 3.285, roughly, I'll just round it up to that, seconds, like that. So let's write t is equal, I'll just leave that. Yeah, so basically, t is equal to 3.285 seconds. Uh, that's how long it takes for the outfielder to throw a, uh, a 100 feet per second ball all the way uh, 280 feet to the home plate for the catcher. And 100 feet per second is about 68, um, yeah, 68 miles per hour. So that's a throw like that, which is decently fast, all the way to here directly. It's about 3.85 seconds long, goes T. Uh, 3.285 seconds long. And again, in the uh, parts B and C, we'll go over how long it takes if they were to throw it instead to a shortstop that can throw faster all the way to the catcher. Anyways, that's all for today. If we learn from this uh, pretty interesting, uh, uh, interesting application of differential equations into uh, baseball and uh, basically throwing uh, how long it takes to throw the ball and uh, and whatnot. So anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learn like always. You can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.